sometimes the, the words to songs get caught up and, and we, miss, we miss the full intention. I think most of us got the drive, but we might have missed an important detail. Choir said, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Sometimes when we shout too loud, we miss, we miss the most important part. They said, there is hope. Not in Democrats. There is hope. Not in Republicans. There is hope. Not in Richmond. Not, not in Washington. But, but, but the hope <laughs> is in Christ. Oh, God. I wonder, is that a word for somebody this morning? That you're encouraged to know that as long as Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, there's still hope. As long as he's sitting high and looking low, there is hope. Somebody say hope. Oh God, I feel I feel our help in the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, somebody give God praise for the city of hope. We bless God for them and the direction of our musical our directors and our minister of music and all those that take part in ushering the presence of the Lord in this place. There is a word from the Lord. Would you join me as we talk to our Father in heaven? Father, we come before you this morning with humble hearts and bowed heads. We come surrendered now, setting aside every weight that so easily besets us. God, our personal agendas don't matter right now. Your word is about to go forth. So God, allow us the attentiveness to hear what you were so kind to serve up just for us. Thank you for the smorgasbord of Old Testament and New Testament, for prose and for proverbs and for history and for epistles. Thank you, God, for 66 books that touch every part of our lives. Now, God, we just ask for a slice this morning that'll help us press on just a little bit further. God, allow it to be none of me but all of you. Work through me that your people would be blessed. This is my prayer in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. People of God said amen. Amen, amen and amen. Uh, I want to switch it up. I know, I know just by the fact that we have a relationship that you revere and honor God's word. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to press you to stand this time. I, I know that's what we do, and I'm okay with doing it. Most times, I'm real big about doing it. But this time, I just want to serve you. Just rest there, and I, I want to read to you. Is that all right? Amen. Travel with me, if you will, to the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. Just so that somebody makes sure they understand we stand because the Old Testament teaches us, as Ezra read from the scroll for hours, people stood up and they listened in reverence to God's word because they had gone so long without hearing it that they were so glad to hear it, it didn't bother them to stand. Um, that's why we do it, but, but I, because I know y'all love God and his word, I'm not going to press it right this minute. Matthew, the sixth chapter, starting, uh, I want to start at verse 24. Let me warn you in advance, it's, it's a few verses of scripture that we're going to read, but, but we won't preach the whole thing, I don't think. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 24, and I'm going to be reading out of the Message Bible, follow along whatever version you may have. You can't worship two gods at once. Loving one god, you'll end up hating the other. Adoration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship God and money both. If you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God, and you count far more than birds. Has anyone by fussing in front of a mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? 
All this time and money wasted on fashion, do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wild flowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wild flowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you? Do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. Somebody say relax. relax. To not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. Ooh, if I don't say nothing else, let me just read that one more time. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Here it is. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. That's why I want to hang my sermonic hat this morning on verse 34. I read all of that just to get us there to understand that we ought to give our entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. For the few moments that are ours to share this morning, I'd like to talk to you from the thought, don't worry about Tuesday. Don't worry about Tuesday. Deontay, we have before us a very important election arguably one of the more important ones in recent years. And I want it to be said up front that this message really, he didn't send me here to holler, he sent me here to help. I, 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 I would, would suggest that for those of us that have the right and the opportunity to vote, if ever there was a time that we needed to exercise our right, it's now. If ever there was a time we need to reflect on the sacrifices of our forefathers, if ever there was a time we needed to look at some YouTube clips of dogs being released on folk and water hoses being let go on people, if ever there was a time that we needed to hold on to, to not being lackadaisical about a privilege that somebody else had to die for us to have, it's now. I want you to understand that be it presidential, mayoral, uh, school board, or whatever issues that are on the ballot, we need to be heard from. What we simply need to do is vote. But what we don't need to do is work. Here's the fact of the matter. The only control you have is voting. The, the only thing that you really can control, the only way that you can really make a difference is to vote. And watch this. For many of us that are, that are conscientious and astute, you have already placed your absentee ballot. You don't want to be in the lines on Tuesday, and I don't fault you for that. So your impact has already been made. Here's the question. What exactly would worrying do to change that? What, what would pacing the floor for the next three days do to change one Chad in Florida? What, what would sitting up watching MSNBC, Fox, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, 
X, Y, Z? What would any of that do to change? What would it do to watch the poles as they flutter back and forth? And let me be clear, I don't want anybody to suggest that I'm, I'm saying that it's not important, that we ought not pay attention. I would suggest this, we need to be concerned but not consumed. I would say that, that, that we need to pray and not be preoccupied. Because at the end of the day, if, if the only real impact I can make is casting my vote, then I must ask the question again, what are you worrying for? All right. Here's what I don't want us to miss. Don't miss the title because I titled it Don't Worry About Tuesday because Tuesday is just a placeholder for whatever it is you're worrying about. There's some of us that are worrying about the election, but there are other things that we worry about. We worry about our children. We worry about our money. We worry about our families. We worry about our money. We worry about our jobs and our occupation, and we worry about our money. We worry about the state of, of the commonwealth, the state of the country, and even the state of the cosmos. And yeah, we worry about our money. Um, all of those things are, are important, but according to Jesus, not Riolan, according to Jesus, you can't serve two masters. According to Jesus, you either going to serve him or money. You, you either going to trust him or trust yourself. You, you're either going to trust him or worry about the process, but you can't talk out both sides of your mouth and do both. So if God is omniscient, if he knows everything, if he is omnipotent, which means he goes from Washington State to, to Key West, if that's the case, what are we worried about? If he's the God that knows all about your trouble, if he's the God that gave you the children, if he's the God that put the marriage together, then what are we worrying about? It's a good question. I know it's hard to, hard to swallow sometimes, but, but the problem with worrying is it hinders my worship. Problem with worrying because understand what worrying is. Worrying is thinking and figuring in my mind. But I can't think on stuff and God at the same time. The attention that I give to the stuff I am taking away from God. What is the Tuesday in your life? What's the thing? Because Tuesday is just a metaphor for whatever it is that has us worried. What, what, what is it, what is it that's got you pacing the floor all night long? What is it that has you scratching the little bit of hair that's left? Can, can I tell you, can I tell you what's, what's so impactful about this stuff called worry? Can I tell you what's so impactful about this stuff called worry? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Worry doesn't change anything. That's not exactly true. It does. Worry changes blood pressure. Worry changes the size of the ulcer growing in your stomach. And worry changes the pretty face to a place that holds wrinkles. That's what worry does. Why would you want to hold on to something like that? I hear you, though. I hear you. I hear you. Riolan, you're being real coy. You're being real sassy with my problems. You don't live with the stuff that I live with. You don't deal with the stuff that I deal with. And how in the world, with all that I'm dealing with, do you tell me not to work? 
It's a good question. I believe the text will address it and we'll press on. Listen, listen to what uh, Jesus, please understand that Matthew chapter 6 is a part of the most familiar, most uh, popular sermon that Jesus ever preaches. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And in the midst of this sermon, Jesus sits the disciples down and, and these people who supposedly have been walking with him and understanding him, he has to sit them down and give them an elementary lesson on who he really is. Right. That's why he takes the time to help them understand, listen, why are you worried about the clothes you wear? Don't you know that the butterflies and the wildflowers and the insects that I adorn are better than Michael Kors or I can't think of another one right now? Could ever be. He, he says, he says, please catch this. Uh, I have taken care of all of those things and you are more important than any of them. Because Although I spoke them into existence, I created you. You're the only thing that I took dirt, shaped and molded. You're the only thing that I took a part of me and put into you. You're the only thing that's walking around with Ruah, which is the breath of God in you. And you think I'll take care of them better than I'll take care of you. What you worried about? He, he says, he says, verse 34, um, give your uh, entire attention to what God is doing uh, right now. How, how do I avoid worrying about my Tuesday? I would argue the first thing you've got to do is you've got to learn to focus on what's in front of you. You've got to learn to focus on what's in front of you. He says, he says, give your in higher attention. Deacon Parker, when I was in the corporate world, eh, not just in the corporate world, but, but oh, in, a, in, in life as a whole, I used to take pride in being very good at multitasking. I enjoyed being able to say how, how proficient I was at doing more than one thing at one time. Until somebody uh, more wise and, and more, more, with more experience told me, you know what multitasking it is? It's doing a lot of things not very well. He proved it to me because I used to take great pride in having my laptop on my desk and reading an email and being able to have a conversation with somebody sitting on the other side until I was reminded that the person sitting on the other side was there to have my attention. But I was splitting my attention between them and the computer. And so I wasn't doing either one of them very well. And the truth of the matter is although we claim that we cast all our cares upon the Lord, on one hand, we're telling God to handle it, and on the other hand, we're trying to take it back from the Lord. And what Jesus says is if you're going to ever learn not to worry, then you've got to learn to focus on all of your attention on what I'm doing right now. I hear you. Well, God, what are you doing right now? I got good news for you. You ought to be able to see what God is doing in the here and now. Um, um, I said this at 8 o'clock. It's worth repeating. Uh, uh, one of my family members the other day was shopping for some Halloween candy. And they called me distraught. They said, man, I was shopping for Halloween and they were playing Christmas music. He said, when did they start playing Christmas music in October? And the truth is, somebody is going to miss fall waiting on winter. Somebody going to miss Thanksgiving worried about Christmas. Somebody going to miss 29 worried about getting to 30. But what you ought to learn how to do is in the here and now, thank God for right now. You missed what I said. Pastor, what's so big about right now? Well, right now, you got blood running warm in your veins. Right now, you got the activity of your limbs. Right now, you clothed in your right mind. And there's somebody that knows that he didn't have to do it. 
but because he did do it. I want to thank him right now. I want to give God praise. I know some folk that didn't make it to right now, but he kept me. Okay, let me say it the way Jeremiah said it. Jeremiah says it this way. Uh, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's why I got a praise, a praise on my lips. Because even though last night when I laid down, I wasn't sure about this morning. I didn't have to worry about this morning because new mercies were waiting on me. Anybody grateful for the new mercies every morning? I don't have to worry because I'm focused on the right now. Now, let me say this. Slow down, Riolan. Yes, sir. Unless there's somebody in here, Hudson, that knows Michael J. Fox or can travel back to the future, then the only thing you can impact is now. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow's not promised. And dare I say, let me take a little pastoral privilege and say, it is an insult to God to only focus on what used to be. If all you can tell God about is who used to be in your life, how good you used to have it, what stuff used to be, then you have told God, that I'm more concerned with the God of yesterday than the God of right now. How, how do I not worry about Tuesday? First thing is you got to give your full attention to right now. Here's the next thing, here's the next thing I would argue. I would argue that the text suggests if you're not gonna worry about Tuesday, you also have to stay in your lane. Watch the text. Um, he says, he being Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. I like to say that because sometimes when the Bible is read, people get in their feelings while the preacher saying that. No, no, no. This ain't what the preacher said. It's what Jesus said. Yeah. 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 So if you're going to get mad, yeah. <laughs> give your attention to what God is doing right now. Watch this. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Um, um, you, you gotta stay, you gotta stay in your lane. Um, um, Jesus says, I want you to focus and watch me work now. Because, because you can't, you're not, uh-huh, uh, what's this, the lesson? She, uh, she's military and many of you others are military. Um, um, sometimes we operate outside of our rank and pay grade. People that work for the government see some stuff not a part of your pay grade. You, you worrying about stuff that don't come before you. Tell it this way. Uh, I told 8 o'clock one time uh, I was, I was a, a youth and I happened to be in earshot of my mother and my father as they, as they were having a conversation. And, and they had a situation that they were trying to figure out. And I had taken a, an advanced class or two in middle school. <laughs> I was in advanced world history. I had taken pre-calculus. I thought I knew something. So I was listening to my mom and my dad talk, and I formed an opinion. And I shared it. I said, Dad, this is what y'all need to do. He looked at me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Just one look, just one look. <laughs> he, he looked at me and he said, stay in a child's place. Till I ask you, I don't need your help. I've been doing this for a long time. Appreciate your effort, but I got this. Taught me a val valuable lesson. That is to stay in my lane. 
But can I tell you the same way that my earthly father could put me in place? Our heavenly father says the same thing. You are the child and he is the father. And let daddy handle daddy's business. Here's how he told Job. Where were you when I formed the earth? Where were you when I built every mountain range? Where were you when I made every tributary and every river and every sea and every ocean? And now you're going to tell me how to do my business. The best thing for you to do is stay in your land. Don't worry about it. Just give it to me. Because while you're trying to figure it out, I've already worked it out. How is it that you don't have to worry about Tuesday? You got to learn to focus on the right now. Work on what's in front of you. Do one thing and do that well. Do today. There's enough trouble waiting on us for tomorrow. Right. Dr. Rain, if I had time, I'd talk about that word trouble in the text because what it really, uh, what it really speaks to is hailstorms in the agrarian society. In other words, when they planted crops, when the hail would come down, it would destroy that which was already planted. And what, what the Lord says is, it's enough trouble already coming on tomorrow. Tomorrow, the hail will come down tomorrow. Let's just thank God that there's no hail right now. Um, you got to work on what's in front of you. You got to stay in your lane. But, but finally, uh, you got to know that God's got this. Sounds very sophomoric, sounds very elementary, and I would agree with you about that. It's the beautiful thing about God, sometimes his word is so simple that we miss it. Watch what he says. He says, um, God will help you, no, 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 yeah, that's it. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Let me say that again. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. While we sit and, and worry about the Tuesdays of our life, mm -hmm. while, while we pontificate and, 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 and talk about so eloquently what needs to happen and how it ought to take place, here's a question that I I don't think it's going to be very popular, Reverend Childs. Because I have a relationship with some of you, I would argue that about 95% of us have the same hope for this coming Tuesday. You know, you got to leave room because you just never know. <laughs> you just never know. So I believe we all have the same hope. Here's the question. What if God doesn't agree with us? What if what we hope for doesn't happen? What do you do if red overtakes blue on Tuesday? I, I know what some have said, Sister Davis. I've heard that some say, I'm on my way to Canada. <laughs> know what's funny about that? Canada don't want you. <laughs> I've heard people say, I'm going back to the motherland. Motherland don't want you. In a real sense, what you gonna do if it don't go your way? Let's get past the election. Let's talk about the other Tuesdays of your life. What happens? if your will is not God's will? What happens if he doesn't fix it? What happens if he doesn't change it? What happens if you don't hit the lotto? Is he not still God? Won't you still wake up on Wednesday? Won't he still be sitting high? and looking low. And what I'm trying to make us understand is we're so busy telling God his business and how he ought to handle things 
that at some point we ought to pause and say, Daddy, what's your pleasure? Because maybe this time we've got to pay for the sins of some of our own mistakes. Yeah, I know we can't say nothing right there. Do we trust God or do we trust this man process? Do we trust God or do we trust our own intelligence? How is it that I can not worry about the Tuesdays of my life? How is it that I don't worry about the doctor's report? How is it that I don't worry about about the bills that keep coming in? How is it that I don't worry about my child that doesn't seem to be taking the path that I charted out for them? How do I not worry about that? You got to deal with what's in front of you. You got to stay in your lane. And you got to know that God's got this. He's got more experience at it than any of us. Here's, here's how the songwriter says it, and I'm done. Have you any rivers? that seem uncrossable? And have you any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible and he'll do what no other power, no other holy power can do. Do I have a witness in here that God specializes? There have been some things that you didn't understand there have been some situations you couldn't see your way through. But God, I feel my help coming. God specializes in doing the impossible. He'll open up the Red Sea and let you cross on dry ground. He'll let you fight a giant and beat him with a slingshot and a stone. He'll allow Jesus to wipe away all of your sins. God specializes. And having said that, some of us will leave here. I don't know what us is going to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't have to know. God knows. And he specializes. Here it is. Here it is. You can't, you can't help but worry if you don't know Jesus. As a matter of fact, you've got good reason to worry <laughs> if you don't know him. Because one of the great benefits of knowing him is I get to cast all of my care upon him. Why, Sister Lewis? Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's why we get saved. Because he loves us so much. He doesn't want us to worry about Tuesday. He's got that cup. Is there somebody here this morning that doesn't know this Jesus that makes all things well? Is there one this morning that's walking around with worry? And I want to make sure because so often my words get twisted. I didn't tell you you shouldn't be concerned. I said you can't be consumed. And there's a distinct difference between the two. Is there one this morning that, that wants to give this Jesus a try? You've tried everything else. You've tried everybody else and where does that guide you? All of us have been there, but we found out that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Is there one today you need to be saved? You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You, you want to recommit yourself. Maybe you, you know him, but, but y'all y'all hadn't been communing lately. You want to get back in line with the Lord. Or finally, you're looking for a church home, and we want to recommend the City of Hope Union Branch Baptist Church. Is there one for any of those, any of those appeals? Salvation 
recommittal, or membership. Amen. We are preparing, bless you, God. We are preparing now for, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just make sure, keep going, you're fine. I felt it. I, let me give about 20 more seconds. Salvation, recommittal, membership. No pressure. Just want to make sure. Because we got time for this. I said, we got time for this. This is why we show up. We discovered this weekend only two reasons to come to church to worship God and to serve others. We got time. Is that somebody? Amen. 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 We prepare now to receive our Holy Communion. Officer, officers are in place. Let us begin to think on those things that we need to repent before our Lord.